Happy Monday. I'm going to give you all just a minute. There's a lot of people still entering and getting connected. <clears throat> so I'll give you a second to be able to hear us. It's so good to see you today on this Monday. My name is Anissa Mitchell. I'm with PMD Alliance, and I want to welcome you to our program today. We're going to be talking about why is this program called Hey Siri? Um, we're going to be talking about speech changes and then some technology that um, is available that can be troublesome for those who have speech changes and a project um, study that's being done to help kind of address that. So before I do an introduction of our speakers today, I just want to uh, show you for those who might be relatively newer to Zoom, although I think pretty much everyone's an expert nowadays, um, to hover at the bottom of their screen and to open up your chat box. I would love it if you would give a shout out to all of us and let us know where you're joining us from. We like to see all the different places that people join in from. We see people from you know, all across the United States and Canada and all different parts of the world. So let us know where you're joining us from. So I'm excited to introduce, we have two speakers today that's going to be doing this topic with us. The first one is Dr. Lorraine Ramig, and she's an internationally recognized clinical scientist. She has an established record in areas of aging and neurological voice disorders. Her research has been funded by the National Institutes of Health for over 20 years. She's a member of the National Advisory Council of the National Institutes of Deafness and Communication Disorders. She is part of and pioneered LSVT Loud. It's which is many of you know an evidence I can't talk an evidence based behavioral treatment for Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Um, she has trained over twenty thousand speech clinicians and physical and occupational therapists in over seventy countries and LSBT loud and big. She's a principal investigator for the collection between LSVT Global and Google on Project Euphonia, which is what we're going to be discussing today. So we welcome Dr. Ramig. And then we also have with us Heather Hodges. Now, if you guys follow us and see the different programs, you're going to see we have Heather back to back. We have her today and we have her tomorrow. She's actually kind of talking about different parts of of what a speech therapist can do. So today it's, it's focused on speech changes. She is a speech therapist, obviously a consultant and an expert clinician um, and is a training and certification faculty and a uh, uh, education uh, administrator with LSVT Global. So she's also part of LT, LSVT Global. She specializes in neurogenic voice and speech disorders, as well as diagnosing and treating dysphagia, dysphonia, and other upper airway disorders. Her role within LSVT Global includes collaborating and presenting on Google's project, Project Euphonia, which is again to improve voice recognition software for those of you that have dysarthria and dysphonia. So if you've tried to like talk to Siri or Alexa and you've had some challenges, then that's something that we're going to be talking about today. So I want to welcome both Heather and Lori. Thank you so much for having us. I'm going to share my screen and then Dr. Ramig will take uh, the presentation away. Sure. All right. Can you see that okay? Yes, very good. Wonderful. Greetings, everyone. We are delighted to be here today and we welcome you. I'm Lori Ramig and you just saw Heather. We thank Team PMD Alliance for this wonderful opportunity to talk with you. And we thank you all for your attendance. So on with the show. Have you ever wondered this? Hey Siri, can't you understand me? Today we will discuss why this happens with people with Parkinson's disease and how you can help Google and LSVT solve this problem. Next. 
We greet you from many places, New York City, the University of Colorado Boulder, and the National Center for Voice and Speech in Denver, where most all of our research on Parkinson disease has been carried out. Next slide. We also greet you from beautiful Tucson, Arizona, which is the LSVT global headquarters. So we're all around the United States and come and visit us if you can. Next slide. So our plan for our talk today is as follows. I will do a brief review of speech and voice disorders in Parkinson's disease, their origin and a bit about efficacious treatment. I will introduce Project Euphonia, including a video from Dr. Bob McDonald, Project Director at Google. And then Heather will discuss and provide all the details on you, how you can participate in Project Euphonia. Then we will have time for question and answers. So we'll have a very fun session. Next slide. Over 89% of individuals with Parkinson's disease suffer from voice and speech disorders. These are some of the primary characteristics reduced vocal loudness, hoarse monotone voice, and imprecise articulation are among the classic characteristics reported in the literature and they may feel familiar to you also. These voice and speech disorders contribute to lifelong frustration, embarrassment, and social isolation. This is summarized in the statement from one of our patients, if I have no voice, I have no life. So the bottom line is speech and voice disorders are very, very common in Parkinson's disease. And as you know, they can have a negative impact on quality of life. Next slide. The basis for the speech and voice disorders in Parkinson disease is complex. And I'm gonna highlight three of the elements that underlie the speech and voice disorders. One is the motor disorder, hypokinesia, reduced amplitude of movement across the entire speech production mechanism. This is very much like the hypokinesia in your arms or your legs, but it's affecting the muscles of speech production. A sensory disorder is very well established in Parkinson's disease. This may have happened in your world. Patients have soft voices, but they deny their voices too soft, saying the whole world needs a hearing aid. And this makes speech challenging in patients. It's a very key element underlying the speech and voice disorder in Parkinson's. And then there is an internal cueing disorder. Parkinson's results in disruption of the internal cue or trigger for a movement. Patients do not self-initiate. So let's say, for example, you hear a soft-talking patient and you say, hey, Joe, make your voice louder. And Joe can, with your external cue, make his voice louder, but it's very difficult for him to do that on his own or self-initiate with the internal cue. So given this complexity, it's not surprising that speech treatment has never been effective for 89% of the patients with Parkinson's disease. Next slide. However, the great news today is following 20 years of research, the short and long-term efficacy has been established for the intensive voice treatment LSVT Loud in three National Institutes of Health, NIH, randomized control trials. And as you know, randomized control trials are the gold standard of treatment evidence. So on the left, you have an example of an individual who's a soft talker, hypokinesia in the respiratory system, vocal folds and vocal tract, and this causes the voice to be soft, hoarse, and monotone. But with a click by Heather, this patient now has received LSVT working on improving vocal loudness, which scales up 
effort across the entire speech mechanism. You see the respiratory system, the phonatory system, and the vocal tract improve, improving vocal loudness, but improving speech intelligibility as well to make functional speech production possible in these patients. And this is very, very exciting. We have published data on hundreds of patients who have received LSVT loud successfully and have had a major impact on their quality of life. In fact, next slide. Today, LSVT loud is considered the global standard for speech treatment for Parkinson disease. There are over 21,000 LSVT loud certified clinicians in 78 countries. And we also have over 29,000 LSVT big, which is the allied physical and occupational therapy in 55 countries. You, there's so much more to learn about this. We love to talk about it. You can go to the LSVT website, which is on the bottom of the slide to learn more. And we are always happy to provide information. Next slide. Now today we are talking about the soft talking person. Hey Siri, can't you understand me? And you can understand why this occurs when you attempt to speak to automatic speech systems. The reduced loudness, the hoarse voice, the monotone and the imprecise articulation make it difficult for these automatic speech recognition systems to understand you. The reason is because they were trained on normal speech. They were not trained on disordered speech. And that's the exciting thing Google is doing today, which is training these speech recognition systems to understand disordered speech. Next slide. So Google is doing this in Project Euphonia. It's an early stage research project initiated by Google to increase accessibility to automatic speech recognition by speakers with impaired speech. The goal is to allow these speakers with disordered speech to interact with everyday technology, smart devices, computers, to maintain independence, safety, and enhance communication and quality of life. Next slide. So step one in this project is to teach speech recognition systems how to understand disordered speech. There is literature about this automatic speech recognition in normal talkers, but what we need are sufficient speech samples from disordered speakers. And this is how you all can help. Next slide. We feel very grateful because of our over 20 years of research on Parkinson's and our access to a large Parkinson disease community that we were invited by Google to, pro uh, to participate in Project Euphonia. We initially began with a phase one study that we completed on 40 patients and we are now on to phase two, looking to screen 1000 patients. So let's now take a look at a short video summary of Project Euphonia. This video will, will be presented at the Movement Disorders virtual meeting, actually that starts this Friday. So take it away, Heather. Hello, we are presenting our work on building a database for automatic speech recognition in Parkinson's disease. I am Professor Lori Ramig of LSVT Global, and I am joined by Dr. Bob McDonald of Google. The objective of this presentation is to describe the rationale and process for acquiring speech data to contribute to increasing accessibility to speech recognition for patients with Parkinson's disease. Disordered speech and voice may limit access to everyday voice activated devices, such as mobile phones, smart speakers, etc. These devices have automatic speech recognition systems that have been trained on non disordered speech. This makes it frustrating for individuals with speech disorders, such as those accompanying Parkinson's disease, 
to utilize these devices. Project Euphonia is an initiative by Google to make speech technology more accessible to individuals with non-standard speech. For example, ALS, Down syndrome, stroke, cleft palate, cerebral palsy. The first step in this process is to gather large numbers of speech samples from disordered speakers in order to train speech recognition systems. This paper reports our initial work to collect speech data from individuals with Parkinson's disease to contribute to this project. Because of our over 20 years of research on speech and voice in Parkinson's disease, our research team at LSVT Global was invited to collaborate on Project Euphonia. After a series of pilot studies, procedures were established to optimize successful data collection supported by speech mentors. Screening procedures were established for technology, cognitive, motor challenges, and potential home support. Recruiting was expanded to include eight major Parkinson's disease organizations. By completion of the final pilot study, over 75,000 phrases were collected from patients with PD, MSA, CBD, and PSP. Outcomes of the speech recognition data analysis are reported here. Looking to the far right in the circle, you can see that the word error rate was improved by approximately 80% for speakers rated as mild, moderate, and severe. We had a very limited sample of profound speakers and there was only a 24% improvement there. Now, Dr. McDonald will briefly summarize the results of Project Euphonia from a larger group of individuals with non-standard speech. Speech samples from more than a thousand individuals with impaired speech have been collected for Project Euphonia. Our research aim is to improve automated speech recognition systems to better understand disordered speech. And our strategy is to build upon advances in end-to-end -end deep neural networks that have proven so effective at improving accuracy for typical speech. In this poster, we provide an overview of the corpus, which recently passed a million utterances. We also review key lessons learned, particularly those related to scaling data collections and effectively powering machine learning research. As of February of this year, our corpus includes over 1,300 hours of utterances from individuals with impaired speech. In fact, 579 individuals have exceeded 300 phrases. The utterance corpus spans a wide variety of disorders, etiologies, and severities. Some lessons learned include ensuring privacy and consent details are robust and clear. Critically important is active and continuous involvement with advocacy groups and individuals in these communities. Regarding the speech type and platform, our focus has been on scalability and transcript quality. This led us to prioritize prompted speech to enable high transcript accuracy. Samples were recorded from user devices rather than in a sound booth. The accompanying noise and acoustic artifacts were mitigated using a combination of manual and automated reviews. We kept participant burden in mind when constructing phrase lists, preferring shorter phrases over long paragraphs. These phrases span several domains that were chosen based on the use cases for eventual products that we envision such as home automation or conversations. Progress in creating ever more accurate ASR model required increasing investment in quality control. The net result of the data and extensive machine learning research is a method for building personalized ASR models where word error rate is reduced by 75% relative to the out of the box unadapted speech recognition models. In fact, for over 80% of the personalized models, the word error rate was below 15% in the home automation domain. We present details about this ML research in a companion paper. We hope that sharing this information will allow other teams conducting research or collecting data related to disordered speech to more efficiently advance their work. And we'd really like to acknowledge the contributions from thousands of people and 
partnerships that have helped power this research. Our conclusions and current goals for Parkinson disease, a feasible data collection procedure has been established for Parkinson disease and the project will scale up to include larger numbers of patients, disorders, and dialects. Our target now is to collect data on 400 patients. In order to do this, we need to screen 1,000 patients. Thus, we need your patients. With that in mind, we invite you to join Google and LSVT in Project Euphonia to help individuals with Parkinson's disease gain access to automatic speech recognition. To learn more, contact us at either email or my personal email, and we'd be delighted to talk with you more about the project. In conclusion, we offer thanks to the Parkinson's community for their important collaboration throughout this work. Okay, you can see the scope of this project is very, very large. And Parkinson disease is one of the groups that they are studying. So we wanna make the biggest impact possible so that Parkinson's disease soars to the top in terms of the number of samples they have to train their speech recognition software. So with that in mind, Heather will now provide you details about how you can participate in this exciting project. Wonderful. Thank you for that introduction, Dr. Ramig, and for the background basis of why speech is impacted with Parkinson's disease and thus why it's hard to get Siri or Alexa or our Google Home to correctly understand what we're asking of it. And so I have the great privilege of being a a mentor on this research project. And what that means is I get the great joy of working directly with participants. I get to work with patients who've been diagnosed with a, a Parkinson's or Parkinson's-ism, um, their family, their loved ones, on making this research very approachable and enjoyable for each individual. And so I'd love to walk you through the different components of what the project looks like and what you can expect from our team as we support participants in this important technology advancement. So research participants are really guided through the process step by step with one of our team members from LSVT Loud by your side. The initial contact for those who reach out over email or those who register for the study from the flyer that was sent out to this community by the PMD Alliance on our behalf, that goes to our fabulous research coordinator, Savannah, and she performs the initial contact um, via phone, Zoom, email, whatever your preference and easiest communication uh, means may be. And through that initial appointment, she talks more about the aims of the study, the goals that Project Euphonia has, and the requirements, which I'll get into a little bit here in a future slide. After meeting with Savannah, those participants who are interested in pursuing the research meets with one of the mentors. There's currently a team of five mentors, myself included. All of us are trained speech language pathologists. So we're truly communication experts. We're experts in voice and speech. And we each have specialty experience treating voice, speech, and swallowing in those with Parkinson disease specifically. We are all LSVT loud trained and certified, so it truly is an area of expertise and interest for all of us. When you meet with your mentor, it occurs from the convenience of your own home, as does the entirety of this research project. As mentioned in the video, um, when Bob McDonald from Google was talking about the research, um, no longer is this research needed to be uh, completed in a sound uh, booth or at a clinic. This is something that can happen at the comfort of your own home or facility. 
During the meeting with the speech pathologist, we do a brief screening. Uh, this screening mainly includes listening to your voice and speech as you read some simple phrases or as you repeat simple phrases if reading or focusing in on text is difficult. And we assess whether that voice and speech is something that may challenge the Google computer, so to speak, that it's something the voice recognition software can truly advance and benefit from. Those who have target voice and speech characteristics that we're looking for during that same appointment are enrolled into the study by the mentor and trained on the research platform. The research platform is all web-based, so you access it through um, Google Chrome or through Safari uh, web browser if you're joining from an iPad or an iPhone. So it's all web-based. It's nothing to download or install. You are able to log in after enrollment. It uses the cloud to transmit data to the computer scientists at the Google um, Labs. And so again, nothing that will bog down your system in terms of install, downloads, or uploads. It's all done automatically for you. All we need are recordings of phrases. During that appointment, we walk through the uh, process for recording those phrases. You see a screenshot here of somebody recording from a handheld device from their smartphone. And we ask folks to record their natural voice reading simple phrases such as this, cancel alarm. And I point out on here the use of natural voice. And that is due to the phenomenon that we see when people are talking to a device or they're talking on a meeting with the computer. Uh, we also see it occurring when people read versus when they're just talking on the couch with their spouse, for example. We also know, as Dr. Ramig pointed out, that when asked to be loud, a person with Parkinson's disease can talk loudly, but the self-initiation isn't always there. However, something about reading and being on a device, people tend to want to talk more clearly. And so I highlight the need for the natural voice, the voice that others may find is harder to understand, or you may perceive as hoarse or mumbled or a little bit slurry when you talk. With that natural voice reading these simple phrases, the mentor will work with you during that session to optimize the accessibility of the program. We want to make it really easy. The controls are very intuitive. It's hitting that record microphone button on and off. The icons uh, are very intuitive. And you can record from your residence on a phone or tablet. Those are the preferred means of recording at this point in the research. But if those are not available or if they're cumbersome to the individual, that's no problem because we are optimizing ease and accessibility for our participants. So it can be performed over a computer such as a PC or a MacBook. And the benefits to this is there's no need to travel to a recording site. You can complete most of the recordings on your own time, and it is Apple and Android compatible. We say that most of the recordings are performed on your own because there are some recordings that the mentor will do with you. That way we are there to scaffold and support to ensure that the program is working um, optimally and as it's supposed to for you. And so that it becomes a very comfortable routine that you can perform uh, when you're at home on your own working through these recordings. We also do some check-in meetings. After you have met with the mentor, you will have meetings about once a week to have a 15-minute check-in. This is also done over a Zoom call. 
And this enables the mentor to listen to your recordings, listen to the data and ensure that the website, the platform is working correctly. Ensure that we're getting what we call clean samples. And what that means is that it is you reading the phrase with your natural voice and not a you know, perfect, loud um, voice with no mumbling or no hoarseness, et cetera. We want it to be the voice that you would find Google or Alexa would have a hard time understanding. We're also ensuring there's no background noise, such as um, a dog barking in the neighborhood or um, a hum from a fan. Those things sometimes can throw off the algorithms and their uh, programming of that uh, automatic speech recognition software. So we're there to ensure that the time you're spending recording is truly getting great data over to Google. And we are always there to answer questions or address your needs. For most participants, they complete the full research project within about a week of that initial mentor meeting and training that was performed. At this point in the research, we are at a phase where participants only have to record 300 phrases. Some of them are simple, like the one in the last screenshot, like cancel alarm. Some are more of a sentence length, but they're all fairly brief. You may have noticed in the video that we showed when Bob McDonald was talking that the average person recording for this project in the prior phase recorded over 1,500 phrases. So they've already done amazing work in improving the software. You can see that the um, error rate that misunderstanding rate, I suppose, is what you could think of it as, uh, went from 75% down to, um, you know, more like 15%. And so that, that recognition error of people's uh, speech has already really improved. And now they need 300 phrases recorded from each individual. And that's where we see it takes about a week to get this completed. Some people will complete it independently on their device or their computer. Some people will do it along with a care partner who may help them with the technology or the encouragement and ensuring that it's only the participant's voice that's being recorded. Now, our main concern, of course, is that this research project is something that we're able to help participants with, that we are able to make the technology something that's enjoyable and it's fun. And so when asked for feedback from participants in our last phase of the research, this was some of the awesome feedback that we received when just given the simple question of, do you have any feedback about your experience? And so one individual noted, I thought this was great. It was a great experience. I know how it is for a system to not understand when I speak. And it was so refreshing to know that Google was thinking of us. Another individual um, who was helping a participant noted, noted, the patient needed assistance with the technology. Due to vision problems, we fed the information through our smart TV via an HDMI cable, so the screen was larger. This certainly is not a requirement for anyone to do, um, but it just shows how your mentor is there to get creative with solutions and really make the experience approachable. The, I will say to this point, and because there are many people who do have issues with vision and reading a screen or reading something on their phone. And so what the current uh, phase of the research platform, this web-based platform has done, is there's actually an icon now that people can press and it will read the phrase aloud 
and then the individual can repeat it. Um, so we really are continually cognizant of any challenges that people may encounter that would prevent their participation and their valuable voices being uh, contributed to Project Euphonia. And the folks at Google are so responsive in really seeing it from the patient's point of view that we're able to provide that feedback on. Another individual noted, I have enjoyed the experience. Some people, especially during the lockdown phase of the COVID crisis, um, really loved having something to do and feeling that they were contributing while they were at home and not able to go out. And so they said, I really enjoyed it even more than I thought that I, I would. When talking about the mentoring experience, um, it was noted by one participant about their mentor. She was thorough in explaining how to do it. We want to absolutely be there every step of the way. And one noted, I had a few software glitches that our mentor was able to contact Google about and get it resolved. So that is another role that we play in technology and in research, it's all a work in progress. And so instead of a technological glitch or a little bug becoming an area of frustration, it's really nice that you have a mentor to reach out to and we can be the one to troubleshoot it. The burden is not on the patient or on their family members to figure it out. We're there to get it resolved. And Google is a wonderful collaborative partner in getting that resolution occurring. And so as mentioned, your voice is needed. And so we invite you to join Google and LSVT in Project Euphonia. And so as mentioned, this is part of our flyer, which uh, you may have already received or will receive in the future um, in a communication from PMD Alliance, in that we are working with Google to make the speech recognizers more accessible to people with speech disorders. Not only is this important for asking Google, what's the weather so that you can plan your day accordingly, or something fun like Google, play my playlist, play some music, um, but also for those devices in the home that help with things like safety and comfort, such as asking Google, turn on my lights. We want that type of a voice command to be accessible for people with movement disorders so that it is a safety component. You don't have to fumble in the dark to go find that light switch. You can ask the Google device to do it for you. But to get those recognizers better trained and understanding a variety of speech changes and speech and voice challenges, we need those samples. Um, and as you saw in the video and from what Dr. Ramig was presenting, um, there's over a million phrases that have been collected so far. And so that's the volume that really is necessary for advancing this computer science. So we are recruiting people with speech disorders to help. Specifically, we're looking for Parkinson disease, idiopathic Parkinson disease, um, progressive supranuclear palsy, multi-system atrophy. We've also had um, great contributions from people with CBD or those who are post deep brain stimulation surgery or a vocal tremor. And we are looking for mild, moderate or severe speech and voice disorders. And as I mentioned, you can record those samples online in the comfort of your own home or residence with the assistance of one of the expert speech clinician mentors. There are some technology requirements for participating. The first of which is having access to an Android or Apple phone, tablet or computer. There's an asterisk here um, because I wanted to mention that the only tablet that is not um, compatible with this research is, are the Amazon or the Amazon Fire tablets. 
Um, those are not compatible for the research, but all of the others are, uh, which is the vast majority out there. As I noted previously, phone and tablets are the preferred means of recording your voice samples at this point, but that's not a absolute must have. You can record over a computer as needed. We also require that voice and speech changes are occurring and that they, you find that it does make it difficult for others or for technology to understand you. As Dr. Ramig presented on, traditionally those devices were trained on normal speech, normal voice. So now it makes sense that to improve their recognition of soft voice, um, hoarse, raspy, slurred, mumbled, et cetera, within your speech, that's what we need now to get those voice recognition systems better trained at understanding a variety of speech and voice. Because the um, platform is run online through the cloud, um, and it is something that it requires enrollment. It's not something that's just available openly to the public. Um, it is required that you have a Gmail email address or a willingness to get one. We've had some people who have a Yahoo account or an AOL account, but they've agreed to get a Gmail account just for this study that they're able to log in to the recording platform. And this is absolutely something that Savannah, our research coordinator, or one of the mentors can help you get set up. Don't feel like you have to set it up and navigate that process by yourself. This is something we're absolutely happy and a great example of how we're here to help every step of the way. And we ask that you are available to start the study once you meet with the mentor. As I noted, most people will complete the project within about a week, some people a bit more. But when we say availability, essentially we're asking that you don't enroll, meet with the mentor and then go on a two week vacation, um, something like that, or plan it right before you know, your family member's wedding that you're going to be busy with. And that's just to ensure that really once you have enrolled and you've trained and you feel like you've had practice with the recordings with the mentor there by your side, that you're really able to run with it and that you're not gonna be off for two weeks and then we forget because we didn't practice for two weeks. Um, so that's where we ask for that availability to be ready to start. If you do um, have an interest in the research, but you have an event coming up, you can always start with signing up. And Savannah is our research coordinator. She's truly uh, true to her title in that she can help coordinate the best timing for you and brainstorm that if you have questions about an upcoming event that you would be um, taking some time off for. And so to learn more, this is a QR code you're welcome to scan if you have a, a printout of the flyer or of this presentation. We do also have our contact information. Um, it's project.euphonia at lsvtglobal.com. We also have Dr. Ramig's email here for specific questions, ramig at colorado.edu. And absolutely, we owe a huge thanks for um, all of the assistance from the Parkinson's community for getting our recruitment efforts and the word out about this really exciting uh, research that is ongoing. And we owe a special thanks today to PMD Alliance. It's always a pleasure to join you and to be able to present with you. And we really appreciate that support. So I thank all of you for attending today. I'm going to leave up a LSVT um, organization slide so that you have our further contact information next. But with that, I know we've had some questions come in. So we'd love to open the floor to any questions and make sure that we get those answered for you today.
Thank you so much um, to both of you. So we did have a question because um, you were going over the different devices that would support this. And one person asked, you know, made the assumption Chromebook would work for this. Yes, it sure would. The Chromebooks work great for this. Absolutely, yes. And then there was an earlier question um, wanting to know about some of the initial outcomes, and they were interested if there was any difference between men and women. That's a, that's a very, very good question. Um, I can ask uh, Google. I don't know that they've done an analysis with males or females, but Heather, you might be able to comment on the process of the data gathering from the men and women that you uh, worked with. I will say that uh, they have expressed uh, that they need more females in this phase. Um, and we did find in our last phase that the vast majority of those who completed the prior phase of study with the mentors were male. And so I, I do know they've asked for a call to have more female speech and voice samples sent to us. And uh, we are seeing a bit of that occur in this initial part of this phase. We are seeing more females. Um, so I would say any data they've collected um, up to this point will be updated as they do receive more female voices to be able to analyze and compare um, to the male uh, samples that they already have. Fantastic. And someone had sent me a direct message um, and it was more of a comment. They said, this is really fantastic and would be so helpful for their brother. Um, excited for them to get involved who struggle with their speech. And I wanted to know, because we've mentioned some words that maybe not everybody is familiar with. And I know you've kind of mentioned that, but just to reiterate, like, could you describe exactly what hypophonia is? Um, and then maybe some of the other issues with articulation, just so that people can understand some of the, the common speech issues that might be reflected in this, you know, in Parkinson's and related disorders that would be helpful to know for this particular um, research. Sure, absolutely. Um, the most common speech disorders in Parkinson's do involve voice. Those are some of the initial problems. And hypophonia simply means soft voice, soft monotone voice. So that's very common even in early Parkinson's disease. There's also hoarseness, breathiness, etc. In terms of articulation, there may be slurring, there may be some mumbling, and there may actually sometimes be some uh, palilalia, which is a rate issue that occurs. It's like a repetition of words and syllables. And for this particular project, we want everyone to simply get screened. Don't worry about screening yourself out and thinking, oh, I'm too severe or I'm too good. Just come on in and get screened. And I think on one of the flyers you got, there's a button that says register here. And if you just want to cut to the chase, you can click that button. You get into the system and then Savannah can help you through the whole process. So you can certainly use the email address and and use it and write a question or whatever. But the shortest path to beginning the process is clicking on register here. It takes you right to the LSVT global um, sheet that Savannah starts working with you. And once you understand the project, you can decide, is this something I want to do or not? And as Heather mentioned, the initial uh, data collection phase typically takes occurs over the course of a week, but that does not mean you're recording your voice for an entire week. You're, you're simply recording 300 phrases. Some patients knock it out in a day, a half a day. And so it, this isn't an enormous commitment of time. And as you saw in the previous study, we did 1500 utterances and this one it's cut down to 300. So it go, you can get done with it in a week, but it doesn't mean you're collecting your voice data in a week. And you, you will learn all the ins and outs of the project when you um, fill out that little sheet of paper. And any questions you have, my email's on here. I'm more than happy to talk to you personally, as are all the mentors. And I think 
One of the most valuable things we learned in the first phase of the project was how important the mentors were to discussing this with the patients and assisting them. Everyone loved it. Nobody didn't love it at all. And I think the, the powerful feeling they got was they were really making a contribution to improving quality of life in patients. And, you know, people can say, well, Google's going to get a product out of this, so whatever. Bottom line is no NIH research grant could ever do what they're doing. And the amount of power behind this is amazing. And the fact that I think one of the uh, people commented, it's really great they're reaching out to disordered speakers. And it really, really is. Um, and so I think it's, it's done with the best motivation at heart. Patients have loved it and the outcome should be something very valuable for the Parkinson community and all those other disorders. You saw ALS, et cetera, et cetera. So they've been working with other organizations and other disorders to make similar contributions so that this automatic speech recognition gets trained across the board. And I'm going to uh, ask is this also like when someone's wanting to talk to text? So I know that sometimes it just does not understand what I'm saying. Um, will this will this help that as well? Yes, because I'm thinking yes. that's gonna be a huge relief to people yes. that have a hard time texting. Yes. Yes. And there's an applicability for everyone. Ab no, yeah. absolutely. And um that will definitely definitely be an important outcome. And I, I recall when I had patients with LSVT, they would start trying to use Dragon software and they were unable to use it. And after they got treatment, they were able to use it. And so the idea would be the training. I saw someone ask the question if there's an honorarium. Yes, there's a $60 gift card for patients when they complete the uh, study. Awesome. And mm -hmm. we had another um, question related to DBS. And I know you mentioned that, you know, earlier in your slides, this particular person did have a deterioration of speech initially, and then with some reprogramming, it did improve. But their question was, so if they participate in this, should they switch the settings um, so that Siri and Google cannot understand them as well? Yes. Okay, that's so, all <laughs> so the idea, the idea again, and it seems like a, a interesting way to look at it, but we want you to present your most, as Heather says, natural speech or um, direct to display your disorder. It's fine. We've had some patients who actually do the data collection when they're off their medication. So their speech and their voice are worse because the whole idea is we want to challenge the speech recognition systems of Google so that they will learn how to really understand the most severely disordered speech. It doesn't mean you shouldn't come if you are mild. We want mild, moderate, and severe. We want everybody just show up, we'll screen you, but um, that's an important part. Another thing I wanted to mention, we sometimes get questions about uh, international patients. We're more than happy to have international patients. Um, you have to be able to read English because the chit chat uh, thing that you're recording is in English, but you can certainly have accents etc. And in the future, the goal is the project will definitely go internationally where you will have French speakers and German speakers, etc. But they're not there yet. And so the at this point, though, don't be hesitant. You know, if you feel like you have an accent or something like that, that's great. Come one, come all. <laughs> awesome. And we did have a question. I know you you answered the one about an honorarium, but someone's wanting to know, will Google eventually charge people to use this software? It's probably likely that they will have a product. Um, that's, you know, kind of the, they're a business, but whether that product um, is accessible financially, I think that's the goal. I mean, the, there would be no point in creating this if it weren't easily accessible to individuals. And I, I need to say there's great sensitivity within the organization because some of the players on the team have patients in their family with different neurological disorders, ALS for one example. And so there is real sensitivity to the whole point of this is to help improve quality of life in patients. So it whatever comes out of this will need to be accessible financially to patients. Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. One person um, had 
said that they would love to see how much better their voice is recognized in this project euphonia phase one versus the siri that they're dealing with now <laughs> oh <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yes my husband has i don't know something that in the morning goes off and starts talking to him and i just go shut that thing up <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, yes, but I, I mean, this is absolutely the wave of the future. I mean, I mean, we all have to talk to speech recognizers when we call up the airlines right now. I mean, everything is automatic speech recognition, and if you have a challenge with your speech, whether if I have a hoarse voice one day, they can't understand me. The whole point is to make uh, non-standard speech easily accessible for automatic speech recognition, so we all have access to all of those things. Yeah. Well, and this this particular question that came in direct message goes along with that because they want to know um, some. Well, they're saying some people speak almost as if they're singing their words, like uh -huh. they hold on to the words at the end. Is this picked up in the research as well? If that's their way they're speaking, then yes, it would be a part of what would be looked at with automatic speech recognition. And that's the beauty of having this entire range of disorders. As you heard Dr. McDonald say, you know, we're one piece of the pie with Parkinson's, but they have this whole huge range of disorders. And they're very, very interested in um, different severity levels, different styles within the different disorder areas, because it always makes it more important in terms of the outcome for teaching this automatic speech recognizer. Yeah. Fantastic. This is a fascinating project and I'm excited to see the outcome when this is all done. I have a feeling you're going to get some additional recruits. Again, um, if you guys still need the link. I'm getting ready to copy it back in there again. Um, Kelly is going to send out an email to everyone that's on the, the call today so that you have the flyer, the link so that you can join in. So um, we hope you will get involved in this trial. And, and the thing of it is, is that, you know, we always encourage um, people to get involved in research. And this is one of those ones where you don't have to take a medication, you don't have to do anything, but you're, you're certainly helping out um, the greater good and potentially yourself in this process as well. Um, so if you can spare a week's worth of, of time, this is a very worthwhile thing. So I really appreciate it. And I think I have one more question um, and I think we've kind of addressed this, but I want to go back and ask it anyway. So they said, what if a person's issue is just speaking too softly? So you did that's mention fine. the soft voice. So we definitely. That's fine. Yep. And that's classic Parkinson voice. And if your voice is too soft, the automatic speech recognizer can't understand you. So that's very important. These questions are wonderful. Thank you. Well, they are. We have a, a very engaged and intelligent audience. So thank you so much to both you, uh, Dr. Ramick and Heather. And I hope you guys will come back because Heather's coming back tomorrow. We have back to back Heather, I keep saying, <laughs> um, because she's going to be talking about swallowing issues in Parkinson's, things that you need to know about the swallowing changes that can occur even early in the disease. Um, some things to be aware of and um, how speech therapy is involved in detecting that and even helping rehabilitate that. So I'm excited for you to hear that presentation with Heather. So if all of you would give your wave of gratitude to Lori and to Heather for joining us today and giving us such great information about this research project. I thank you ladies so much for joining us. And I thank every one of you for joining us. And I hope you will be willing to get involved in this project. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.